Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. I had a request from Douglas, one of my longtime viewers, uh, to go over the in-view menus. Now I assume what he's referring to are these menus here you can find along the top of the uh, perspective cameras. So your in-view menus here. And Douglas, if you're watching, please uh, let me know in the comments if I misunderstood what you were asking for with that request. But I figured I probably couldn't go over all of these in one single video. Um, but I thought I would start with the lighting menu here in the view menus. So you have your view shading, and then here's lighting menu. So in the lighting menu, we have lots of different settings here. And you see I have my uh, environment project scene set up with some simple lighting in it right now. If I switch to my uh, perspective view here, you can kind of see what I've got going on. Obviously, this uh, room is not completed, but I have a directional light coming in from the outside. It's casting shadows into the room. I have a couple of area lights up here for the uh, light coming from the chandeliers. I also have a point light here in this little chandelier casting this light on the wall, as well as an ambient light, just giving a little bit of light into any uh, shadowed areas so it's not just completely black. So let me go back to my uh, set camera view and we can kind of look through these lighting options. Let me break this off the lighting menu here and so we can switch through these uh, pretty easily. So here we have a couple different settings. Use default lighting. Click on that one just to use the default lighting. This is the default lighting that you would find in your scene typically without any other lights in your scene when you're making any uh, objects in your scene, you have this gray material on it or whatever. It's just this default lighting. Now the 7 key will say, will specify to use all lights in your scene. I wish this is what we were looking at a minute ago. Now one thing I do want to mention with use all lights is that there is a limit on how many lights in your scene will actually show up. If I go to the normal perspective camera here, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So right now I have two, two area lights here. So one, two, three, four, five lights in this scene right now. If I select this point light, for example, and duplicate it, move this over here, you can see the light being cast from the point light. I'll duplicate it again. You can still see the light. I can still see it. I'll move this one over here just so we can not confuse them. Okay, I can still see this light. Now this light, you can see I no longer can see its effect because there is a light limit. So currently now there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, about ten lights in the scene, is that right? So the tenth light had no effect in the scene. Now the way you can kind of see that if I go to the renderer menu viewpoint 2.0 options we have here light limit is 8 so on the ninth light I placed it no longer worked now you can increase this if you have lots of lights in your scene if I increase up to 9 for example that light suddenly becomes uh, active and I can see it again of course, if I duplicate this one and make another light, that's now the tenth light, and my light limit's at eight, so I no longer can see this light's effect. Okay, so this is a light limit in your uh, viewport renderer, and this is just to make your scene not chug too hard when it comes to trying to process all the power. It gives you some uh, a limitation on how many lights will be uh, calculated per second, kind of thing. So just so you know, use all lights. If you have more than the light limit of lights in the scene, those excess lights will not actually be shown here in the perspective camera. Now, they will still affect the render. If I were to render this right now, this light over here, even though I'm not seeing an effect in the scene, it will still affect the render. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to get rid of all these excess lights I have now. And I'll go back to my camera view. So use all lights. Yes, you're using all your lights, but with, with that one caveat of the light limit. And of course, you can see here the shortcut key to use all lights is the 7 key. 
So if I said, for example, four, which is wireframe, five is shaded, six is textured view, and you can see I've started working on UVs over here. Let me go back to five for shaded for now, and then go up to seven for lighted view. If I did six and then seven, you would see the textures here in the lighted view, which is not very pretty right now. So five for shaded view, then seven for use all lights. The next we have use selected lights. If I click on this, everything goes black, but if I actually select a light, you'll see that light's effect on the scene. So here is my ambient light, for example. You can see it casts a ambient, kind of dark navy blue light in the scene. And if I, you can select more than one light to see those lights all affecting the scene as well. Let me go back out to my camera leaf. So I can select this light, for example, and this one. So you can see I have two area lights pointing in opposite directions to get both those angles. And you can, of course, just start selecting all your lights to have them all take effect. But uh, this is a nice way of isolating a light, seeing what that light is doing, and then in fact, adjusting that light's settings accordingly before you go back to use all lights and see it all together. So use selected lights. It's a very, very handy uh, feature. Then we have use flat lighting. So if I click this, use flat lighting, you can see everything goes completely flat and featureless. It's just very, just flat. No, no depth or dimension is being rendered from the lighting. You can click on the uh, show wireframe on shaded. So I can see my wireframe now in my flat uh, lit room, which can be uh, useful sometimes, especially if you want to get like a nice wireframe screenshot. You can use this flat shaded, this use flat lighting with wireframe unshaded to get a nice uh, screenshot of your wireframe. And also, if you're working in, say, video games, a lot of times you would use flat lighting for your model uh, to display the textures on the model uh, so you can see them without any of the Maya default lighting affecting it, which can help uh, make sure you're not, you're, make sure you're getting the correct colors and so on. So use flat lighting. So for example, if I press the six key right now, it's gonna go back to shaded view with uh, default lighting. But now I can click on use flat lighting again, you can see how bright the textures colors are because we're not having any light information at all. It's just straight up color. So you can see those colors really, really uh, clearly. Click on use flat lighting and we'll deselect wireframe on shaded. So we'll go back to this. And then the last is use no lights. So even though, even though you have lights in your scene, you can just effectively turn them all off. So you can get like a, for example, you can get a nice silhouette effect. Uh, it won't use any of the default lighting either. So default lighting, all lights, use selected lights, flat lighting, and then use no lights. And then last we have a couple check boxes here. And we go back to use all lights and return to my clamped camera view. We have two sided lighting and shadows. So right now you notice I have shadows turned on. You check this box off, then the shadows go away and are no longer rendered in your scene. Now this is a shadows preview, so it's not like completely accurate. You can see here I have a lot of, if I, if I uh, switch to my mobile camera, if I zoom in on these shadows, you can see they're very pixelated, not very clear. This is again just a representation of the shadows. If you were to render it, you'll get much sharper shadows with the correct render settings, of course. And then last we have use two-sided lighting. So what is that referring to? If I click on it now, right now it's turned on. So use two-sided lighting is currently turned on right now. If I uncheck this, it's very little change. But if you look up here, you can see through this uh, flower-shaped opening, as I turn it back on, you can see how this area here is lit. If I turn it off again, now it turns black. So what I need to do actually is to go outside the building and look at it from the outside. So right now, use two-sided lighting is turned off. Turn it back on, like so. So what's happening is these shapes, for example, let's look at this one. This is not a complete surface. This surface has no, it's not like a complete closed surface like this one is. For example, this one has front and back faces on both sides. 
and it's an enclosed surface. All of the surface normals are pointing out. This one is just this piece of geometry here and going up like this. All the surface normals are pointing into the broom. And so these are the back faces. So if I say use two-sided lighting is turned on, then two-sided means both sides of these faces are going to receive light. However, two-sided turned off, then the back side of these faces do not receive light. And so all of these faces that currently are, look kind of dark, those are the back faces or back sides of geometry that are not face, the normals are not facing out toward the camera right now. They're all facing into the building. So that's why I use two-sided lighting turned off has no real effect on the interior since all of the surface normals are pointed here into the interior of the room. But yeah, that's the lighting menu in a nutshell. Let me go back to my clamped uh, camera here. I hope that uh, clears up how this lighting menu works and how these options are pretty useful when lighting your scene and uh, isolating lights, for example, is incredibly useful for fine tuning lighting. Uh, use all lights and use default lighting, so on. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like and comment, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.